Welcome to our first episode of the new series, Harvey Teaches You A-Level Chemistry. Today's episode is on buffer solutions. A buffer solution is a solution that will resist a change in pH if a small amount of acid or alkali is added to the solution. So, what are buffers used for? There's a, there's a lot of different uses for buffers in industry and in your body. We use them to calibrate our pH meter in practical 9. There's a bicarbonate carbonate buffer in your blood to keep it at a constant pH of 7.4. They're used in pools um, to stop it hurting your eyes and textiles and cosmetics to keep stuff at a constant pH so it doesn't damage your skin or the dyes. There are three main ways of making buffers. You can combine a weak acid or a weak base with a stronger acid or a strong base, um, but you can't use a strong base and a strong acid together. You can combine a weak acid or base with their salts, or you can combine two salts with conjugate base pairs. The key point is that you need a little bit of acid or base left over and a little bit of its salt in order to form an equilibrium. For example, if we combine a weak acid and a strong base such as sodium hydroxide, then an equilibrium will form between... And I'm going to stop me right there. Okay, future editing Harvey here. All of that is wrong. What is happening here, here and here? First of all, that's not a reversible reaction. That reaction was just completely wrong. I don't know what the correct reaction is, so I'm just going to put in the normal reaction for um, the dissociation of an acid because that's the most important equilibrium reaction. Um, and the last one, I thought that the H2O wouldn't count as a salt, but turns out it's really hard to find a reaction that doesn't have H2O as the salt. So I'm going to pose that as a question to you guys in the class or in the comments section, depending on whether you're watching this in the classroom presentation that I give or on YouTube where I will probably post this. Um, yeah, what is the actual reaction for method two in that case? And also for method three, is there a possibility where you can have it where it works as a buffer without having water as the salt. I'm going to put this corrected poster at the end of the video, but until then I'm afraid you're going to have to put up with the wrong stuff on the side. So, continuing with the rest of the video. Now you may be wondering, but Harvey, how do buffer solutions actually work? Well, as we learned in the making of buffer section, a buffer forms an equilibrium. And as we know from our section of the course on equilibria, equilibria resist changes in its environment. This means that if we add more acid, more H plus ions will be in the solution. So the equilibria will shift to the left to reduce the concentration of the H plus ions, reassociating some of the acid. The opposite happens if we add a base. In this case, some of the H plus ions react, in which case the concentration of the H plus ions goes down. So more acid dissociates to increase the concentration again. The graphs of buffer solutions are where stuff really gets interesting. Unlike with a normal acid graph where the pH increases constantly, in a buffer graph there is a point before the neutralisation where the gradient levels off and the pH stays roughly the same for a while. The area where the gradient flattens out is where the solution acts as a buffer. The buffer works effectively up to one pH unit either side of the pKa of the conjugate acid. That's everything I have to say on buffer solutions. Um, if I've missed anything, point it out in class, leave it in the comments. And if you have any questions, do the same. Thank you for watching the first episode of Harvey Teaches You Chemistry. Come back for the next.